Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today's video will be a shorter one where I'll be showing you how to transport dart frogs. I'll be showing you both what type of enclosure to keep the frog itself in, how to catch the frog and how to protect that box from heat or cold during the trip. So this will be useful both for the seller and for the buyer. However, this video will not cover shipping since I live in Sweden where we have no companies who provide the service of shipping live animals. Some invertebrates can still be shipped through the normal postal services here, but you definitely shouldn't ship dart frogs like that. Before we get into the video, I also want to mention that I have an announcement at the end of the video, so stick around to hear about that. But for now, let's get back to the video. The cups I'm using are 2.5 deciliters, which is around 1 cup. I bought them from a Danish dart frog related webshop, which I will link in the description, but there are many other cups you can use. Just make sure they're escape proof and a suitable size. The cups I'm using have white sides, because Swedish Reptile Expos actually have a rule saying that only one side of the cup may be transparent. So I've just bought a ton of these cups and I use them for everything regardless if I'm at an expo or not. These cups don't have any air holes, so I have to make some myself. All you need is a candle, some matches and one of these potato testing sticks. I don't know what they're called in English because I couldn't find anything about them. But you can also use a needle or something like that. I just heat up the testing stick and use it to create some air holes. Usually it's a good idea to make the holes from the inside so any sharp edges will be on the outside, but whenever I use this technique the sharp edge comes when I drag it out, so do whatever seems appropriate. Next we need to keep up some humidity in the cup, and for that I use cotton pads which I moisten up a bit. I highly recommend them because they hold humidity much better than household paper or something like that. But you can also use sphagnum moss or something else. Finally, I just take some cuttings to give the frog something to hide under and to give the buyer a little bonus gift if they care to propagate it. Now I'll just spray it down a tiny bit and that's it, now it's time to catch the frogs. To catch the frogs, I simply chase them into this plastic cup and then transfer them over to the transport cup that I've prepared for them. I barely have to touch the frogs at all since they just jump into the cup as soon as I get close to them. As you probably know, dart frogs aren't poisonous in captivity, but too much human touch isn't healthy for them because of oils and soap on our skin, so you can wear wet plastic gloves if you feel like it. You could put all the frogs together in one slightly bigger container too, they don't have to be separated, at least not these ones since they've grown up together and it's just a short trip. But this time I kept them separated out of routine, since that's another rule at the reptile expos I've been to. If you're curious, these frogs are Dendrobates tinctorius Assyrius, that were bred by me, and are now heading to a new home. Normally, the buyer would pick them up here, but we had the roads by, so I thought I might as well bring them. Finally, we have to keep the frogs warm during the ride, and for that I use a styrofoam box. If it's hot or cold, I highly recommend this to keep the temperature stable. If it's really cold or hot, you could also use a heat pack, a heat mat on a thermostat, or bottles of hot or cold water, but be very careful so it won't overheat or get too cold, because that can easily be lethal. We will be driving in a heated car during the entire trip, but the styrofoam box is definitely enough isolation on its own. Finally, and very important for some of you is to have proper documentation, since dart frogs are listed in the Apodix 2 in CETAS. The requirements vary from country to country. Here in Sweden, you need a breeder certificate proving that they have a legal background, and to me, any seller here that doesn't provide these papers is an instant boycott. However, I don't think this is necessary at all in most states in America, but don't take my word for it, just ask other dart frog keepers in your country what rules you have to follow. Now, that's it for the topic of today's video, but as I mentioned earlier, I have an announcement to make. I'm going to make a video reacting to and reviewing your vivariums and frog rooms or whatever you want me to react to. So if you want something to get featured, upload a picture to Instagram under the hashtag tropicaltutorialsreview or email me at contact.tropical.tutorials at gmail.com. 
I'm expecting to mostly see dart frog vivariums, but other exotic pets are allowed too. But please specify what animal species you're keeping there in the description or in the email. Hopefully there will be enough contributions, because if not I obviously can't make a video, so please send me everything you have. There might be constructive criticism, but it's only lighthearted and fun and I won't be too harsh and I'll keep you all anonymous of course. I won't put up a set end date, but try to send me it as soon as possible and I'll probably record a video in like a week or so. Well, that was it for today's video. If you're enjoying my content, the best way to support me is to subscribe to the channel and share it with a couple of friends. It goes a long way. You can also give the video a like and leave a comment if you have any questions. If you want to see more of my animal room, you can check out my Instagram at gecko underscore geek06. Don't forget to send me pictures of your vivariums and animal rooms to be featured in the next video, and I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.